fuckers took a while to bring me this documentation. Ooh, look at my herbs. Ugh. Anyways, but I finished reading the first paper. I already realized that this is not a psychotic, you know, it's not for a psychotics disorder, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's for schizophrenia. But many doctors have been prescribing it unapproved indications off the label, such as this. And it seems to be efficacy. F, F, whatever. It treats negative symptoms of schizophrenia, which is a flat affect, which means Yeah, that's being flat. Also, poverty of speech, which no, which is just damn not when trying to say that you were speaking slugs versus girls. You know, they don't want to use real English. They want to use big words. Lack of motivation and interest. They couldn't find a big word for that, but, you know, it speaks for itself. I'm motivated as fuck. I could stay outside all day, every day, look at the docks, yet you whether I stay right here in a cubicle, so you can provoke that, because that's what you're doing. You're not trying to help me, you're provoking a problem. You want me to be catatonic, you want me to be down here in the bed, sleeping, with so much medication that all I can think about is drooling. Poor grooming and hygiene. Well, you don't want me to use the other, but I keep asking. And believe me, I spent a hundred bucks on my hair. I care. Look, look, I think they were reading this shit before they came and gave it to me, but... I don't think they understand how bad this makes them look. Look, when published, clinical studies indicate the efficacy when published and the standards of medical practice support the safety of those treatments well not all of those uh, clinical studies get published and let me tell you a lot of negative effects happen on those studies that are not published because you know how we can just sweep it under the rug no one will ever know The practitioners may use peloperidone off-label for acute mania and bipolar disorder, as well as for those off-label uses clini clinicians apply to risperidone because the two drugs are essentially the same. So why is the name different though? So there is risperidone and peloperidone. Palate. Peloperidone has to do with palate. You put it in their mouth. Risperidone, maybe it's nostril. I will Google later just to confirm how right I am because let me tell you, I'm always right. But it was right after, don't have to Google it. Cool. Peliperidone comes in extended release tablets and long acting intramuscular injections. The intramuscular injections, which must be administered by a medical practitioner, are available in monthly in Vega Sustena. Ooh, I think they wanted it to be Latin, but it's not. And three month in Vega Trenza injections for patients who are non adherent to their daily medication regimen. The intramuscular injections may provide an alternative treatment program. They say what peliperidone is, but not the other one. Well, it's in the mouth or in your butt. What do you prefer? Do you have a suppositorial version? Please. I will take 10. I know my finger says 2, but I really, really, really mean 11. <laughs> alert, red alert. Dosing information. The use and starting dosage of peliperidone is 6 milligrams. They completely took the other one off the option because I believe is no bueno. 
The extended release tablet once a day in the morning. The elderly patients and patients with moderate to severe renal insufficiency. What does that mean? You're gonna get kidney stones. Some shit like that. Your kidney failure, whatever the fuck you wanna call it. Because that shit's so heavy, so heavy, so heavy on probably iron or what do you call it? Mercury. Mercury. Because sometimes they gotta dissolve that shit on something. You know what it is, right? When it's uh, injectable. They gotta dissolve that shit on something. So, sometimes they dissolve it in uh, mercury. Because they're dumb. Nah, man, man, more, man, 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 man. Three milligrams a day. The doses range from three to twelve. Three to twelve, bro. That's a huge discrepancy. That's like three times, four times. Initial dose. The fuck does that mean? So eventually you'll be so fucked up, but so fucked up, but so fucked up that to keep you fucked up, we gotta give you more and more. Stay drooling, my friend. Stay drooling. Like the rabbit dog that you are. If you're a teenager, from 12 to 17, like that fucking weirdo that was here. We have schizophrenia. Now they're saying it's a schizophrenia. Not psychosis. It's a schizophrenia. Generally, smaller doses are needed in this population. And an initial dosage of 3 milligrams administered on stage is recommended. Well, if it's a child, 12 years old, I say, she'll probably start like with one. One milligram. You know what I mean? Because the size of a child, the size of a grown up, non comparable. Regardless, let's start with three, bitches. Start with three, because I want you at 12 so I can pay my bills. Anyways. If necessary, the dosage may be increased of increments of three. At increments of three. Never mind one by one. From three to six. Six to fucking nine. Nine to fucking twelve. And if you don't die, fifteen, bitch. And nobody needs to know. Patients who had a trial of polyperidone or risperidone. Here's that one again. Look, it, it, it showed up again. Risperidone. I wonder what happened. Maybe kids with asthma couldn't take it. Uh, Maybe converted to monthly injections of Invega Sustena. It sustains itself. Probably one of those things that like slow release. That's why it calls it that. You know, you put it up your butt and then it slow bubbles out. You know, the, it doesn't work like they say it does. But it has, you know, it's supposed to work a certain way. But since you're human and you don't know shit about shit. You don't really know how it works. It's all experimental until the next drunk comes along and you forget that one and start the new one. Like, Riperidone became whatever the fuck is this one is now. You know what it is? They release a drug, it's like good for like a month and then the next one comes along and you don't even finish trying to figure out what the fuck that one does. You're already releasing the other. You know why? Money's motherfucker, money's. Patients who have been stabilized on in Vega Sustainer for at least four months without a dose of change in the previous two months can be switched to the three month intramuscular injection in Venga Frinza. The conversion of monthly in Vega Sustainer to in Vega Trinza is as follows. If the patient was taking 78 milligrams of in Vega Sustainer, close the door, shut up. Monthly administrative 207. Can you just close the door? Okay, you, we ha I have to give you some DRN to help you. I don't think you have to give me anything. I'm reading the paper. Okay, but you if my voice bothers you, just close the door. You need to keep it calm at the door. Just close the door. God damn. People need to learn their place, you know? You're not in Morocco. Yeah, man. In Morocco, it's the Inquisition. You have no freedom of speech. So as soon as you say anything, they cut off your tongue. Well, I'm not there.
Patience has been stabilized and in Vegas to stand up. <coughs> for at least four months without a dose change in the previous two months can be switched to the three months intramuscular injection of Invega Trinza. The conversion of monthly, monthly Invega Sustain to Invega Trinza is as follows. If the patient was taking 78 milligrams, 78, how did it jump from like 12 milligrams a day maximum? To 78 milligrams. Oh, it's monthly. Okay. I administer 273 milligrams in Vega Trinzum every three months. So you get a real big shot and it's supposed to slow release. Doesn't work. 117 milligrams in Vega Sustana. 410. Jesus fucking Christ. The numbers are huge. I'll just post the fucking document in a bit. Common side effects. <laughs> the side effects associated with polyperidone includes drowsiness, dizziness, headache, nausea, and increased salivation. Polyperidone can induce weight gain, although it does not usually cause a significant weight gain effect as some other antipsychotics. Oh, so now they call it an antipsychotic. I see. Maybe they edited it. You know what I mean? They read it, the whole thing, and then they changed some words, and then they printed it. Because before, it said nothing about being an antipsychotic. Or a neurological disorder. In the area of the brain that controls motor coordination, when disruption occurs in a particular area of the brain, it can produce symptoms. That mimic Parkinson's. So you could get Parkinson from taking this. Including muscle stiffness, rigidity of tremor, drooling, and a mask-like facial expression. Like I said. They want me to be drooling. However, unlike Parkinson's disease, which is a progressive neurological disease, Parkinsonism from treatment with an antipsychotic is reversible. So they say. At higher doses, some patients may experience akathisia, which is a subjective sense of restlessness, accompanied by fidget, fidgeting and inability to sit or stand still. EPS may be managed by decreasing the antipsychotic dosage or adding an anticholinergic medication to counteract the side effect. A beta blocker, such as propranolol, is usually more effective for akinesia than anticholinergic agents. Bro, these people walking back and forth, like that retard that beats up his mother, because they helped him, you know what I mean? He beats her up on occasion, you know, and then she brings him back here. They offer his dosage on whatever medication he's taking. And then he goes back home, the same bullshit. Because why not? Who gives a fuck? Where the fuck is my pen? Beware. Polyperidone may cause drowsiness and sedation and impair physical coordination and mental alertness. I'm just like... Outlining all those up. Patients should avoid tasks that require alertness, which is basically anything. Just lay down and die. Such as driving a car, operating machinery, until they are sure that these side effects will not affect their ability to perform these tasks. You're drowsy. And you're not coordinated. Your mental alertness, which is drowsiness already, just said drowsiness twice, which means that you get really drowsy. And you're supposed to go to work. Or you can live on ODSP for like $1,200 a month, Canadian, wishing that that's going to cover your drug addiction. Yeah, because 
You think this is the only drug that these people take? Alcohol, too. Yeah, ask that chick, dude, whatever. Patients taking peliperidone may experience dizziness upon standing from a rec recumbent position. Okay. Which may lead to syncope, the loss of consciousness resulting from insufficient blood flow to the brain. Basically, if you're sitting down in a certain position and you get up too fast, you may just fall right back down. And now wake up. Awesome. This is due to the opposite effect of polyperidone on blood vessels that normally compensate for postural change, resulting in momentary drop in blood pressure. Dizziness ensues when insufficient blood is supplied to the brain. This reaction is known as orthostatic hypotension and is occasionally seen with paliperidone. Patients generally develop tolerance to orthostatic hypotension. Orthostatic from the bone, hypotension, tense, tenseness of the bone. So I guess your bone gets hard? What? It's swollen. I guess maybe it's swollen. And is occasionally seen with polyperidone, patients generally develop tolerance to orthostatic hypotension, which they don't explain what it is, and I'm gonna have to Google, because they won't. But they should be cautious when rising too quickly, especially when starting therapy or when increasing dosages. Elderly patients and patients taking medications for high blood pressure may be more prone to orthostatic hypotension and are susceptible to syncope, fame, and fall, using compression, which, who faints and doesn't fall? Using compression or support stockings may help with blood circulation. You have to wrap yourself up. Yeah, like with the It Works wrap. As a precaution, patients should be aware of positional shifts and not to rise to their feet suddenly. When lying down, they should get up gradually to a sitting position before standing. If feeling lightheaded or dizzy, they should sit and wait for a minute or two before standing up to allow the blood pressure to adjust. Why do you see what trying to do to me? Incapacitate me. They're trying to incapacitate me. Do I look like someone who's drooling? Who has mood swings, do see things and hear things, maybe, but those things are real. And then what? Because I see and hear things that you don't, I'm supposed to become a drooling mess that you treat because you need money and I don't? Yeah, because I got powers and I got to see things. Oh, I see music. You're sick. Oh, I hear, you know, certain things that are very far. Yeah, you're sick. Oh, I can hear you even though you're two walls down from me. You're sick. No problem. Tardive dyskinesia is a potential adverse reaction to antipsychotic medication. It is characterized by late onset abnormal involuntary movements. You can start with weird shit like that. Shake. Yeah, try to punch people, like that, for example. You know what I mean? For a violent. You can just say that you're taking antipsychotics. It basically makes it worse. Link onset abnormal voluntary movements. This is a potentially irreversible condition that commonly manifests idiosyncratic symptoms such as pillow rolling, movements of the fingers, pillow rolling. Is this it? I don't get it. Darting and writhing, movements of the tongue, lip puckering, facial grimacing, and other irregular movements. The risk of TD is very small with polyperidone and other SGAs. Even with long-term use, the FGAs, on the other hand, are associated with a higher risk of TD, especially in other patients and the duration of exposure to the medication. 
Neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Woo, that sounds evil. Is a rare toxic reaction to antipsychotics. <clears throat> the symptoms are severe muscle stiffness, rigidity, rigidity, elevated body temperature, increased heart rate and blood pressure, irregular pulse and profuse sweating. NMS may lead to delirium and coma. It can be fatal if medical intervention is not immediately provided. There are no tests to predict whether an individual is susceptible to developing NMS when exposed to an antipsychotic. Those NMS must be recognized early because it is a medical emergency that requires immediate discontinuation of the antipsychotic, hospitalization, and intensive medical treatment. Let's make this fucker worse so we can treat them even more. With nothing. All you gotta do is just sit in your bed and shut the fuck up. Antipsychotics, including proliperidone, can interfere with the patient's ability to reduce core body temperature when it becomes elevated under conditions of strenuous exercise or exposure to extreme heat. You could have a heat stroke because you are fucked up. This can result in heat stroke and fatal heat strokes have been reported in patients taking antipsychotics, taking a concomitant anticholinergic medications e.g. congestion or being dehydrated under those conditions may increase the risk of heat stroke. Patients taking antipsychotic medications should avoid prolonged exposure to extreme heat and should drink adequate amounts of fluids to stay hydrated on hot days or with strenuous exercise. That's four pages of this garbage. What other people continue? It will help a lot of people. Continue. I don't care to help any of you, but since it will do better osmosis, I might as well do it anyways. Peliperidone and other SGAs are associated with abnormalities in glucose regulation. Sure. Peliperidone may elevate blood glucose levels, hyperglycemia, and in some cases cause diabetes. While glucose abnormalities in diabetes are sometimes related to weight gain, these conditions may occur in patients without significant weight gain. Patients who gain excessive weight are more susceptible to peridone negative impact on blood sugar and lipids, fats. The FDA requires warning of hyperglycemia and diabetes mellitus and elevated cholesterol and triglycerides triglycerides associated with the SGAs, including paliperidone. Patients taking paliperidone, especially those with a family history or an established diagnosis of diabetes, should be aware of this adverse reaction and should routinely monitor glucose levels and lipids. As soon as you're not taking this shit, you're enslaved for your life. You're a slave to the doctors. Yes, master. Yes, master. No problem, master. Yes, master. No. Peliperidone can affect the conduction system of the heart, heart by delaying normal action of the heartbeat. This delay can be seen on the electrocardiogram as an increase in the QT segment of the graph, known as QT prolongation. Everybody knows exactly what the fuck that is. Everybody's always looking at those charts. Thank you very much for the explanation. Patients may have QT prolongation from cardiovascular disease, inherited heart condition, or predisposing factors such as this administration of certain medications, which means this medication caused a problem with another medication that caused a problem with another medication. QT prolongation may increase the risk of irregular heartbeats, arrhythmias, which is the same, and sudden death. Yeah, you take this shit, you could just pop dead. Awesome. The risk of this severe reaction is sight, but the risk is increased in patients with heart condition or with predisposed factors. I'm just gonna say my grandfather had a heart attack. Good enough, right?
heart attack and kidney stones oh my father yeah failure oh dad there you go i'm just writing down my excuses always learn with your bullshit bullshitter i mean always learn with your bullshitter your bullshitter never knows as much as he wants you to believe he does where was that include cord co-administration of medications that promote qt prolongation a baseline ecg is recommended prior to starting polyperidone if the patient has a risk factor for QT prolongation. This can help to access if reduced dosage or alternative therapy is needed. Peliperidone may elevate prolactin, hyperprolactinemia, a hormone produced in the area of the brain called the pituitary gland. That's about growth. Polyperidone is more prone to elevate prolactin than other SGAs. Prolactin levels rise in women following childbirth, simulating lactation or milk production. Normally, prolactin secretion is suppressed, but this normal inhibition may be opposed when taking antipsychotic medication as well as from other causes, which means you'll probably get cancer. Cancer. I got cancer in my family. There, good enough. Elevated prolactin in males may cause excessive development of the breast, known as gynecomastia. Elevated prolactin levels may stimulate spontaneous lactation, galactorrhea, in both women and men. Co cause impotence in men. Induce irregular menstruation or suppressed menses amnorrhea in women and cause loss of libido and infertility in women and men. Good. Chronic hyperprolactinemia may also lead to decreased bone density and osteoporosis in adults, especially women. Okay, so first it makes the, phone, the bone dance and then it makes it non-dance. So it could go either way. Whatever. It's unpredictable. They know nothing about the drug. That's what it means. Children and adolescents are particularly susceptible to hyper, hyperprolactinemia because this may affect sexual development by impairing synthesis of sex hormones. A serum prolactin level can confirm hyperprolactinemia when clinical symptoms are suspected. Serum prolactin should be monitored periodically for children and adolescents taking an antipsychotic anti medication. When side effects from elevated prolactin occur, switching to another antipsychotic with less effect on prolactin is the usual clinical approach. Elderly patients treated with antipsychotics for dementia-related psychosis were found to have an increased risk of death associated with antipsychotic medications. Although this correlation is not clear, not clear, most of the deaths in the group were associated with cardiovascular heart failure or infectious causes, like pneumonia, infections. So they get infections because your immune system goes low, kind of like AIDS. The FDA has stated that antipsychotic medications are not safe for treating elderly patients with dementia-related psychosis and requires that all manufacturers of antipsychotics issue warnings to this effect. Risk during pregnancy and breastfeeding. Data regarding the use of polyperidone in human pregnancy are not available because you're not supposed to take it. Polyperidone has not been studied in human pregnancy to determine its safety. Bullshit. And its effects on delivery and labor is unknown. Bullshit. Like its parent drug rippers, risperidone, 
Polyperidone crosses the human placenta. How do they know that? In animal reproductive studies, polyperidone was not associated with fetal abnormalities. Animal studies, however, are not always predictive of effects in humans. They are just saying that sometimes it seems to happen, but we cannot say for sure that it is because of the medication. Babies who were exposed to antipsychotic medications, including paliperidone, during the third trimester of pregnancy are at risk of de developing EPS and or withdrawal symptoms following delivery. So they do know that it fucking causes damage. Symptoms include agitation, abnormal, abnormal muscle tone, feeding difficulty, respiratory distress, somnolence, and tremors. Somnolence is just always being tired. Why can't they just say that? In most cases, these symptoms eventually resolved without complications, but some babies may require supportive care and prolonged hospitalization. Paliperidone should not be used during pregnancy unless the potential benefits outweigh the potential risk to the fetus. Women of childbearing age should be cautioned of the potential hazards to the fetus if they become pregnant while taking this drug. Nurth nursing mothers should not take polyperidone because it passes into breast milk and can be ing ingested by the baby. If stopping the drug is not an alternative, breastfeeding should not be started or should be discontinued. Also, potential drug interactions. Paliperidone is not expected to cause clinically significant drug interactions with other medications. Bullshit. Some drugs, however, may affect polyperidone levels. Administration of carbamazepine, tegretol, with polyperidone, for example, may induce the enzymes that metabolize polyperidone and accelerate its elimination significantly, decreasing the blood levels of polyperidone and limiting its effectiveness. It just makes you feel like you should take more. An addictive effect may be observed when polyperidone is administered with other medications that have similar side effects as polyperidone. It is addictive. Drugs that may induce orthostatic hypertension, for example, may take, may have similar side effects as polyperidone. Drugs that may induce orthostatic hypertension, for example, may make the side effect worse when administered in combination with polyperidone. Moreover, given that polyperidone is a medication that acts in the central nervous system, other centrally acting drugs and alcohol may cause greater sedation in combination with polyperidone and should be used with caution. That shit already makes you feel drowsy. Are you going to go drinking? Yeah, and they do that. Because they want to be high as a kite. Nothing better than me high to forget your problems. Give me all the drugs. <sighs> Moreover, given that pelperidone is a medication that acts in the central nervous system, other centrally acting drugs and alcohol may cause greater sedation in combination with pelperidone and should be used with caution. Drugs known to prolong the QT interval can have an, addic an additive effect when co-administered with polyperidone and increase the risk of arrhythmia. Use of polyperidone should be reconsidered with certain atherythmic medications. Procainamide, quinidine, amiodarone, sotalol, antibiotics, antipsychotics, and other class of medications known to prolong QT intervals, especially in patients with history of cardiac arrhythmias. If your heart beats weird, don't take it. Yeah, whatever. Overdose. The number of reported cases of polyperidone overdose is limited. In reported cases, the highest estimated amount ingested was 405 milligrams. The symptoms included EPS, 
drowsiness, somnolence, ha hypotension, confusion, and rapid heart rate, but no fatalities. The danger from paliperidone overdose is its effect on cardiac conduction and risk of arrhythmias. The outcome depends on the amount ingested and whether paliperidone was combined with other medications. Any suspected overdose should be treated as an emergency. The person should be taken to the emergency department for observation and treatment. The prescription bottle of medication and any other medication suspected in the overdose should be brought along as well because the information on the prescription label can be helpful, blah, blah, blah. Treatment Summary Do not discontinue peliperidone without consulting with your practitioner. Polyperidone should only be taken once daily in the morning. Taking it at the beginning of the day allows for the controlled release of the medication throughout the day. Yeah, it is controlled release. For sure that you can swallow a pill and then it will slowly release throughout the day. That doesn't, it doesn't fucking happen. It doesn't happen. The whole damn thing just goes in and at the end it's like you don't get anything. If you miss a dose, take it as soon as possible that day. However, if it is close to the next scheduled dose, skip the missed dose and continue on your regular dosing schedule the next morning. Do not take double doses. I don't even care. I'm not going to read the rest. I am going to, however, take pictures of this and post it. This is the most pathetic attempt to get me to take medication ever. I would rather just sit here in isolation and do nothing up until the end of whatever.